I love meatloaf, and I especially love meatloaf that's been grilled or smoked. And that's what we're gonna be doing with this recipe. We're gonna be building this meatloaf and smoking it up out on the Weber kettle. But we're not gonna be smoking it today. We're gonna to be smoking it tomorrow because one of the great things about meatloaf is you can prep it the day before, get it all formed, seasoned up, everything, put it in the refrigerator, and allow those flavors to sort of meld together, and then you're all ready for the next day when you're gonna throw it on the grill. Now, if you don't wanna do that, you don't have to, but I would recommend, if you have the time, once you form the meatloaf, put it in the refrigerator for an hour or two. That just helps everything sort of come together and solidify because you've been mixing everything together and when you put it out on the grill, you don't want it to sort of slump and fall apart. Letting it have that time to come together really does help. And this is gonna be a bit of a spicy meatloaf. You don't have to add as much spice as I'm going to, but I really want this to have that flavor. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna slice up some jalapenos because we need those jalapeno rounds on the outside of this meatloaf. I'm just gonna cut the stems off. And then we're just simply gonna cut these into, I don't know, maybe eighth inch slices, about like that. Wanna try and keep them at least uniform thickness. If you're off a little, it's not gonna hurt anything. I think I may only need one. I don't know that I'm gonna need to do both of these jalapenos. Now, once we have these sliced, we wanna go ahead and get that center portion with the seeds out of there. If a few seeds slip through, that's not gonna really hurt anything but we want to kind of get them off and end up with this, just a nice little round. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and clean these up and then we'll move on to our next ingredient. So here are my jalapenos all sliced up. Next thing we need to get ready are some chipotle chili peppers in adobo sauce. I've got about a quarter cup here. We're gonna go ahead and just chop these up. These are seeds and all. These are actually gonna go in the meatloaf. And this is why I have my little white synthetic cutting board on my wood cutting board here because this is much easier to clean up on a synthetic board than it is on wood. Just wanna get a good chop on these. That looks good, messy but good. So let's start building this meatloaf. All right, we're starting with four pounds of 85-15 ground beef. I would have rather had 80-20, but I didn't look at the package when I bought it. I thought it was just gonna be 80-20, and it's not. It's 85-15, but that'll work fine. To this, I'm gonna add one egg a teaspoon of kosher salt, half a teaspoon of a coarsely ground black pepper, and about a quarter cup of breadcrumbs to start. I can always add more. So this is a half a cup in here. I'm just gonna go with a quarter. And our chipotle chili peppers that we chopped up. And we mix. Make sure you turn it over and turn it over. For me with meatloaf, it's okay if it's a little bit dense if you pack it down when you're mixing it because you wanna get everything incorporated there. Kind of like you're making meatballs. Okay, I'm gonna add the rest of those breadcrumbs, another quarter cup. A lot of times that's just by feel. Does it feel a little too wet as you're mixing it? I'm happy with that. Now let's form this meatloaf. Now, as I mentioned, this meatloaf is gonna rest in the refrigerator overnight. You don't have to do it that long, but I'm going to. And to make that an easier process, I have a small baking tray here and some parchment paper inside. The reason there's parchment paper is because that's gonna make it easier to transfer the meatloaf from this pan to the grill tomorrow. Rather than having to pick it up with your hands, it's just gonna be able to slide off here onto the grill pan we're gonna be using. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get our meatloaf mixture on here and form it. And I do wanna get it into sort of a log shape here. In fact, pretty much like that. <laughs> Don't need to fuss around too much. Just want it generally the same thickness from top to bottom and side to side. The ends are always gonna be a little bit pointy, but that's okay. Now, before we get our sliced jalapenos on here, I wanna hit this with some seasoning on the outside. And really you can use anything you want. You could just do a salt and pepper mixture, get a little more flavor on there, or a barbecue rub. And that's what I'm using today. I'm using Southern Bell from Gulf Coast Smoke. Just gonna get a nice little coating on the outside here. And now for our jalapenos. And when I put these on, I wanna press these down into the meat so they really hold well. Give them a good press there. 
And really, the design is up to you. Put them any way you want. I can see we got a seed that's snuck in there. That's all right. Now, as soon as we get this done and into the refrigerator, we are gonna put together really quickly the glaze we're gonna be using for this tomorrow. Might as well get everything done ahead of time so we don't have to do anything else tomorrow except cook this up. All right, that's looking good. Let's get this into the refrigerator. So the glaze we're gonna to put together for this is pretty traditional except for the addition of some heat. We're starting with about half a cup of regular ketchup and to this I'm gonna add maybe two tablespoons of hot sauce. You can use whatever hot sauce you want. I'm using Bayou Scuttle from Spice Dog Provisions. You know, I take that back. That was about two teaspoons. This is pretty hot, but really it's about adding as much heat as you want to this. So two teaspoons, not two tablespoons. And we're just gonna mix this together. Guess I should take a little taste. You know, that's not bad. Sweetness of that ketchup, but a little bit of the kick. Nicely diluted in there, so it's heat, but not overpowering. So I'm gonna cover this up. It's gonna go in the refrigerator overnight, and I'll see you out at the grill tomorrow. All right, the Weber Kettle Performer is up to temp. I'm shooting for 350 degrees today. I have the Mallory cast iron grate in there and I'm using the Mallory firewall. That allows me to dial in the indirect zone just the size I want. And if you can see me through the smoke, that's cherry smoke. I'm using a piece of cherry today. So let's get our meatloaf on. And I'm gonna be using this grill tray here today. That will make it easier to take the meatloaf off when it's done. Let's get our internal temperature probe in here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get the lid on. The ultimate internal temperature we're going for is about 160 degrees. But at about 110, we're gonna glaze this with that spicy glaze we made. So I'll see you back here when we hit about 110 degrees. All right, we've been going a little over an hour. We just are about at 110 internal. So let's take a look at this and give it a glaze. That is looking good. Just gonna be light with this because I don't want to knock our jalapenos around if they push out a bit. See some of those getting a little bit darker that are closer to the heat source on this one side. That's all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the lid back on. We're gonna let this finish to 160 internal. I'm also gonna dial the vents down to bring this temp down to closer to 250, 275 for this last portion of the cook. So I'll see you back here when we hit 160 internal. All right, we're coming up on 160. Let's take a look. That has some beautiful color. All right, I am totally happy with that. I'm gonna get this off here, get it inside. I'm gonna tend it loosely with foil and let it rest for about 15, 20 minutes, and then we're gonna have a taste. So here's the finished meatloaf. It's been resting for about 20 minutes, and I'm just gonna cut in and see how we did. Let's see. Oh yeah, that looks good. I actually have a tiny little smoke ring there, which is kind of fun when you're doing a ground meat thing like this. Let me move a piece out of here. I like how it holds together. That looks good. All right, let's go ahead and cut a slice here and get a taste right on the board. Ooh, that looks good. We're having a little juice of lunch with some meatloaf. Just cut a piece of this here. And let's cut a couple pieces. We'll call this lunch. Here we go. Nice little kick from those chipotles inside. That is really good. And I did have a little bit of that outside edge there with that sort of spicy glaze. It's not overpowering. 
This is a meatloaf with a little bit of heat, and I really like that. Mm. Now, if you wanted to, you could hit each individual piece with some glaze after you cut it. That would be good. You could put any other sort of flavor on this, hit it with some flaky sea salt. Anything that you want to do to this is okay. That's one of the great things about meatloaf. You can create a flavor from the beginning, and as you get to the end there, you can even dress it up more. Want to try a piece with some of those jalapenos on the outside. Jalapenos can sometimes trick you. I've had jalapenos that are blazingly hot, other ones that are just mild with a nice flavor. I think the one I used here is right in between. It's got good heat, good flavor. Mm. All in all, super happy with this meatloaf.